and join together as we sing nothing but the blood of Jesus. <clears throat> What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my pardon, this I see, nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my cleansing, this I see, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. But the blood of Jesus, this is all my hope and peace. But, but the blood of Jesus, this is all my righteousness. But, but the blood of Jesus, oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. Weather wise, of course, we want you to be safe. We're glad that you come to worship with us. It was a struggle this morning as we thought about whether we should have the service or not, but I'm glad we are having it. I think things are settling down now. I'm glad that you've come. I believe the Lord's going to work in our midst this morning. I'm glad that you're here. I welcome you. There are a few announcements. Of course, next Sunday is Easter, but we look forward to our Easter celebration together. We will have small groups, okay, at our 9.15 time. And then at 10.30, we'll have our morning worship. Just keep that in mind. We'll be in our regular schedule Easter Sunday morning. Also, our children are going to present a program this Wednesday night. And so you'll want to come and be a part of that this Wednesday night at 6 o'clock. Finger Foods will follow. We'll have a time of fellowship after the children's program. So you'll want to be here for that. I see someone very special in the life of our church, Miss Agnes Hurst, sitting here. And I understand that it's her 90th birthday. And I, I don't usually strike up a tune, but I'm going to strike up a tune. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Let's give Miss Agnes a hand, okay? <laughs> Miss Agnes, we love you and we're glad to see you today. We celebrate you and God's goodness to you. Honey, good to have you guys with us today. Thank you all for coming. Being here. All right. I think it's time to greet one another and welcome one another. This is something I'd like to ask you to do. I know everybody's got their place and the place that they like to sit, and usually that's how I tell whether you're here on a Sunday. I know about <laughs> where you sit. But I'm going to ask during the next song or songs, if you would sort of move from the wings, I'm sorry, but from the wings over to the middle sections, it will help us in passing the elements when we come to the Lord's Supper, okay? So if you'll do that for us during these next couple of songs, then uh, that would be helpful. And we'll just worship out of these two sections today since our crowd is somewhat slim this morning. Okay, stand and greet one another and welcome one another today. Miss Agnes had uh, nine sisters and one brother. And they had ten girls before they had a boy. Did they really? Yeah, the people ate, man. Okay. I didn't know that. 
were you? And my mother was a nurse, so we're a You know how that goes together. I know, right? Morning. Thank y'all. I need one. I need all the help I can get. Good to see you. He's not usually mic'd up. No, I tell you, they wanted me to do it for uh, the, for the uh, well, that and the uh, live stream. He got said, wherever I turn away from the mic, it goes, the, uh, and they don't know how to cut it off and on. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Lay aside the garments that are stained with sin and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood? In the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb. Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be free from your passion and pride? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary's tide. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you do service for Jesus, your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily his praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. There is strength in the name of the Lord. There is power in the name of the Lord. There is hope in the name of the Lord. Bless Last service, and we're going to pray for others right where you are. I'm going to ask you to pray silently and pass that time. I will close our prayer time. We want to pray for the Joe Moody family. Did you know that 
Joe passed away. Do not know any of the uh, details concerning the service, participation. We will pass those along by way of Facebook and uh, email as soon as we know. And uh, we'll try to inform you the best way that we can. Let's bow our heads now and have our prayer. Father, we are so thankful for this opportunity to come together for worship this morning. I thank you for these who have come. Be with those who could not uh, feel comfortable getting out today and coming to church due to the weather. Thank you for their prayers, their thoughts. I clearly believe that at this time. Thank you, Father, for keeping us safe through the storm. We want to pray your blessing upon this time of worship. Continue to move in our hearts and minds. Draw us close to you. and close to one another. Give us sensitive ear, sensitive heart toward your Holy Spirit. Move in our midst. And we acknowledge and recognize that you are here. That you want to do a work. Heart. Pray, Father, for Moody family. I pray for Kim and all the children. I pray, Father, you'll be with them and the loss of their loved ones. Joe, and I pray, Father, you'll just comfort them. And I thank you for saving days. Thank you for the assurance that Joe is with you. Know that he is indeed a trophy of grace. Can you, Father, now to bless this worship? We give you all glory, all thanks. Mountain, one dreadful morn, O Christ my Savior, weary and worn, facing for sinners, death on the cross, that he might save them from endless loss. Blessed Redeemer, precious Redeemer, now I see him on Calvary's tree, wounded and bleeding, for sinners pleading, blind and unheeding, dying for me. Oh, how I love him, Savior and friend, how can my praises ever find in through years unnumbered on heaven's shore my tongue shall praise him forevermore blessed redeemer precious redeemer seems now i see Father, Lord, I thank you for the gathering in your church, Lord, is to take place all the time here tonight. Thank you for offering us. Thank you for the offering. Let us turn.
give it all with you. Lift him up and remember the great mercy of One day I stood on the mountain where the cross of Jesus stood. I walked along that narrow path, once stained with his blood. And in my heart,
We're going to gather around the Lord's table this morning, the Lord's Supper. We uh, practice open communion, some call it here. You don't have to be a Southern Baptist to participate. You do have to be a Christian. But Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me, and if you've never experienced new birth in the Lord Jesus, you don't know what you experience. If you haven't experienced it, then you can't remember. So you must be a Christian. A Christian we invite you to participate in and uh, let me say a word to those who are listening by live stream. Thank you so much for worshiping with us today. I pray you'll worship right along with us during the times that we're passing the elements. Encourage you. Pray, worship as you are doing all through the day. Thank you for viewing. I read a story about a young family who moved into a new house. While they were moving in, the office called the husband to a very important meeting. Consequently, the wife had to finish unpacking all the boxes by herself. She looked around at all the boxes that were unpacked, the appliances that needed to be hooked up. She was holding a screaming baby, and the five-year-old decided to throw his toy truck through the glass plate window. Standing there, and the breeze is coming through the house <laughs> from the open window. And it's overwhelming now, and she burst into tears. Finally, she decided that she would call her husband and tell him what happened. And when she called, she was told by the secretary that he was in a very important meeting and couldn't be disturbed. So the secretary then said, Would you like to leave him a message? Well, that didn't help the wife much because she knew he was pretty lax calling home and she left the message. So this is the, the approach she took. She said, yeah, just tell him the insurance will cover it. Call home for details. And when he got the message, he promptly called home. You know, I fear the message of what Christ has done for us through the forgiveness of sin is often taken for granted. The longer we're Christians, the less the message seems to get through or register in our hearts and in our minds. We shut down sometimes due to familiarity. I've been preparing you for this earth. I am praying today. I can capture your heart, capture your mind concerning the price that Jesus paid for the forgiveness. Our greatest need this morning is the forgiveness of sin. You know why? Because the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, and the wages of that sin is death. The greatest need we have today is the forgiveness of sin. And if we say we have no sin, John writes, we lie. There is no forgiveness except through. Lord I guess you could earn your forgiveness through good deeds, but you could never do enough good deeds. I guess you could purchase your forgiveness, but you don't have enough money. You could be a multi-trillionaire and not have enough money to purchase your forgiveness. Forgiveness costs more than money. It costs life. We have a debt that we could not. I guess you could earn your forgiveness through good moral behavior. None of us could ever behave good. The only way to experience the forgiveness of sin is through the Lord Jesus. The Lord's Supper symbolically pictures what Christ has done for the forgiveness of sin. And this morning I want to use the Apostle Paul's account of the Last Supper or the Lord's Supper. Paul was not there, but he says he received this word from the Lord, and he wrote it down. And I believe he says that, so 
so we might understand. His account is from divine revelation. It's not from Peter. It's not from another disciple. But rather it is of the Holy Spirit. And this is what he writes. In 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning with verse 23, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he took the cup. After supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And then Paul adds, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you show forth the Lord's death till he comes. It's Thursday night of what we call Holy Week. It's the night before the crucifixion. Jesus is meeting with, with his disciples to celebrate the Passover meal. The Passover was the celebration of Jewish deliverance from Egyptian bondage. I read that at the Passover meal, they began with a word of prayer, of thanksgiving, and it was followed by drinking four, four cups of wine. Now scholars believe that it was highly diluted, and therefore there was no danger of being intoxicated. Have you heard the story about the priest that was pulled over by the state trooper? And uh, he got out of the car, and the officer looked into the car, saw a bottle of wine on the floorboard, smelled of the priest's breath, said, Have you been drinking? He said, Just water. He said, Well, I smell wine on your breath. And the priest said, Oh, Lord, he's done it again. Jesus changed water into wine, it is true, but the wine of his day was highly diluted. They drank four cups of wine, and there was no danger of being intoxicated. This is what I read. They would drink the first cup of wine, and then they would eat the bitter herbs and sing Psalms 113 and 114. You know, Psalms are songs. And then they would drink a second cup of wine and began eating the lamb and the unleavened bread cooked as specified in Exodus chapter 12. Then they would drink a third cup and they would sing Psalms 115 through 118. And then they would take the fourth cup of wine and they would pass it among those who were present. In this case, Jesus would take the cup and pass it to all of the disciples. And scholars believe that it is at this point in the Passover meal that Jesus instituted what we call an ordinance of the church, the Lord's Supper. Some call it communion according to 1 Corinthians 10, 16. Some call it the Lord's Supper taken from 1 Corinthians 11, 20. And some call it the Eucharist, taken from the Greek word right here in verse 24 that is translated. Uh, uh, it's translated to give thanks. No matter what you call it, we call it the Lord's Supper in the Baptist church, but it is an ordinance of the church. And Baptists believe it was a memorial supper. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. The bread or the unleavened bread and the cup of the, of the vine or the, the wine is symbolic elements of the supper and they are elements of his sacrifice on Calvary. Let me tell you that there is no indication 
in the biblical account that anything miraculous took place when Jesus blessed the bread and the cup. The bread remained the bread, the cup remained the wine, the physical act of receiving the elements did nothing special within or inside of the disciples. Roman Catholics believe in transubstantiation, which says a miraculous change happens when the elements are partaken. The bread becomes the actual body of Christ. The wine becomes the actual blood of Christ. And it gives an unusual blessing and an unusual power to the recipient. But as Southern Baptists, we believe that the Lord's Supper is simply or simply symbolic. It's a memorial supper. The elements of the bread and the cup, they are symbolic. And it's all about remembering Jesus. The great painter Leonardo da Vinci painted the Last Supper. He labored for years, paying close attention to every detail. He paid attention to the grouping of the disciples. He paid attention to the faces that were all around the table. He paid close attention to a chalice in which Jesus was holding. And finally, after he had finished his masterpiece, he called in a friend to give a look. And you know the first thing the friend said? Oh, what a beautiful chalice. I just can't take my eyes off that chalice. And Da Vinci, da Vinci immediately, they say, took his paintbrush and painted through that chalice, crying out, there must not be anything that takes precedent over the face of Jesus. You see, the Lord's Supper is all about Jesus. Amen? Paul tells us here in verse 24 that Jesus first took the unleavened bread and he prayed a prayer of thanksgiving and he broke it and he said, this is my body which is broken for you. We believe that the bread represents the body of Jesus. Sacrifice broken on Calvary. And when we take the element, we are basically saying, I believe. I believe your body was given on Calvary that I might have everlasting. Think about it. He was beaten with a closed fist, an open hand. He wore a crown of thorns. He was whipped 39 times with a cat of nine tails. Jewish law allowed 40 lashes. But the Romans always stopped on 39 just in case they lost count. They drove nails into his hands and feet. They punctured his side with a spear. His body was devastated and deformed for you and for me. Jesus said, this is my body, broken for you. When you receive this bread in just a moment, you're going to be saying, yes, Lord, I believe you suffered and you died. So when Jesus took the bread, the Bible says he, he gave thanks and broke it. It means he prayed and, he, and then he broke it. And I always have practiced in my ministry of having one of the deacons lead in prayer before we pass the element. Not because they're Jesus, but because that's the pattern Jesus set. He prayed over it before he passed it. So Don, you lead us in this prayer for
bread, the unleavened wafer you hold in your hand is symbolic. The body of Christ broken on the cross for you and me. Jesus said, as often as you eat this bread, do this in remembrance. The blood that cost a life that paid my way, death its price when it flowed down from the cross. My sins were gone, my sins forgot. Precious blood that gave me life, but in three days he breathed again and rose to stand in my defense. So I come to tell you he's alive. To tell
25, Paul's account of the Lord's Supper, we read these words, same manner. I believe that phrase speaks of the prayer. In the same manner, he prayed and he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of the blood is different in the Old Covenant than it is in the New Covenant. Different in the Old Testament than it is in the New Testament. In Leviticus chapter 16, we read of God's instructions to Moses concerning the Day of Atonement. The high priest, Aaron, would sacrifice a bull for himself and his family, he would then enter into the holy place, the holy of holy, and he would sprinkle blood on the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant on behalf of his family and on behalf of himself, that he might receive the forgiveness of sin. You see, this was the way that would allow him cleansing. This is the way it would allow him to come on behalf of all the people. So he offered a bull. Then I understand two unblemished young goats or lambs were brought to the entrance of the tabernacle. One was sacrificed. And then the high priest Aaron would take the blood of that animal. Again, enter into the Holy of Holies, and he would sprinkle that blood on the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant on behalf of the people. And I even read that he would sprinkle that blood on the ground around the mercy seat or the Ark because God could be only approached on blood ground. And there he would confess the sins of the, of the nation. He would confess the sins of Israel corporately. And God would grant forgiveness. And the high priest would come out. And he would speak. He would bestow forgiveness upon the people. He was the intermediary between God and man. He went out and he, and he spoke forgiveness on behalf of God to the people. Well, there was another animal there. There was another young goat there. It was called the scapegoat. And the high priest would lay hands upon that goat, symbolically placing the sins of Israel upon that animal. And then the scapegoat was led into the wilderness far away, and it symbolically pictured God separating man from is well the new covenant the new testament is different jesus christ is both the blood sacrifice and the scapegoat for the forgiveness of sin according to hebrews 9:12 jesus our high priest not with the blood of goats or calves but with his own blood entered into the most holy place and once and for all, he obtained our redemption. Like the scapegoat, Isaiah 53, 6 says, And God laid upon him the sins of us all. When Jesus speaks of the new covenant, he's talking about his own blood. He is saying to us, My blood is the once and for all sacrifice for the atonement of sin. Hebrews 9.22 says, Without the shedding of blood, there can be no gift of You know, when we receive the cup, you know what we're saying? I believe that you shed your blood for me, and your shed blood is sufficient enough.
ready for our prayer. But God. cup is symbolic of the blood of Jesus shed on Calvary for you and for me. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there could be no forgiveness of sin. Paul writes in the text that we're looking at this morning, as often as you drink this cup and eat this bread, you show forth the Lord's death till he comes.
Let me conclude by telling you that one of the greatest threats to the church in the end times will be the imposter, the false prophet, one who comes proclaiming himself to be God's Messiah. And the way to discern a false Christ is his hands. You look at the nail prints in his hand. Fanny Crosby wrote over 500 songs. As you might know, she was blind all of her life because a country doctor accidentally spilled acid in her eyes when she was just a baby. But the great old preacher D.L. Moody said to her one time, Fanny, I want you to know that I've been praying God will heal you Give you back your sight. She replied, Moody, I've been praying God will never heal me. But Fanny, I thought you would want to see some of the beautiful things upon this earth before you go. Oh no. She said, don't ask God to heal me. But wouldn't you like to see? And Fanny Crosby said, just think. If I don't get healing first, the first thing I'm going to see when I get to heaven is the beautiful face of <laughs> What a testimony that is. Fanny Crosby heard that there was a man in Chicago claiming to be the Messiah. She hated that a man would claim to be Jesus, the Messiah. So she wrote a song and dedicated it to the Salvation Army. She heard that this self-proclaimed Messiah was going to be at a certain place at a certain time. And so she went down and told the Salvation Army about it. And they practiced up that song. And she stood there with them as they sang it. Down one side of the street came this self-proclaimed Messiah and all of his followers. And across the street was the Salvation Army players and the singers. And as the self-proclaimed Messiah approached him, they began to sing. I shall know him, I shall know him by the prints of the nails in his hand. I shall know him, I shall know him by the print of the nails in his hand. Here's the story. Suddenly one of the followers of the self-proclaimed Messiah confronted the man and grabbed his hands and looked and said, You have no scars. We hear the singers singing, I shall know him by the prints of the nails in his hand, but you have no scars. You have no prints. You're a fake. All of a sudden, the great crowd following the false Messiah left him. He started following the Salvation Army band and singers, and they all went down the street singing, I shall know him, I shall know him by the prince of the nail. There is but one Messiah for all eternity. His name is Jesus. And you shall know him by the prince of the nail. Father, we pray now your blessing on this message and this observation. The observance that you left with us taught us to you and the ordinance that we give you glory in that and we practice it with all of our faith, all of our faith. Today, Father, I pray you'll use it to speak to our heart, strengthen our Christian life. Father, I pray that if there is one here today who is not by faith, yet invited you into their life, be the Savior, Lord, I pray today would be the day that I pray. I pray for those who might want to come and join the church. I pray for those of us who are saved, secure here at cross, but yet, Father, I pray you'll encourage them. as we continue to prepare ourselves. May we leave this place rejoicing today that you have paid such a sacrifice.
that we might know the true forgiveness. Give us the assurance that your blood we must have a stand of invitation. I'm going to move here to the front and we're going to stand and sing. We're going to pray one for another. We're going to ask God to touch hearts and lives right here today. He touches your heart and moves you to come. Come. I'll be here to pray with you. If you need me, you can come to this altar and pray. But if God's speaking to your heart, you respond. He doesn't lead you publicly. You just say a short breath of prayer saying, Lord, thank you. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. I recognize your sacrifice. I thank you. I hope you'll do that during this invitation. Stand to your feet. Let's sing and you come. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel. Lord, to give up, I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. Taking my sin, my cross, my shame, rising again, I bless your name. You are my all in all. When I fall down, you pick me up. When I am dry, you fill my cup. You are my all in all. tells us that when they completed the supper, sang a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Just feel impressed that we need to sing our benediction. Billy Jackson is our deacon of the week. Brother Billy, we're going to sing. I appreciate so much our, our deacons and their ministry in our church. I want to sing the first stanza to God be the Lord. Could you strike that or find that one for us? We'll sing that uh, first stanza as we lead today. Two things. Pray one for another. Pray for the Moody family. Continue to pray for Miss Phyllis. Miss Phyllis, I see you back there. I just want you to know I love you and I pray for other people. Okay? We continue to pray for Miss Phyllis and all the family. And also, Scott Woodruff is in uh, Birmingham and he's in he's in intensive care. He has fluid built up. They're ministering and he's helping him. He needs our prayer. Okay. Yeah, I'll meet you back. We'll try to pass the range of song. Oh, I'm sorry, Joe Smoot. Get all the Joes mixed up. Yeah, Joe Smoot's in CCU. Flowers Hospital. Okay, I'm going to dismiss before I lose my mind. Okay, let's sing it out. Sing us out. Lord, great things I've done. So loved me the world that He gave us His Son, who yielded the 
his life an atonement for sin and open the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he hath done.